What's up guys? So today we got a brand new video for you. We also got a brand new giveaway to talk about and this month we're going to be giving away a multi-purpose digital meter. Now this thing does a number of different things for you. I have one. I absolutely love this device and it makes mixing salt water and a number of other things very very easy. So if you want to be in the running for this giveaway all you need to do is be a subscriber hit the like button on this video and leave a comment down below and you may win yourself a Seaside Aquatics Salinity Meter. Now we also have last month's giveaway to talk about so make sure you stick around for this entire video and we will be announcing the winner. So kicking things off with number 10 on the top 10 most stunning invertebrates is the Red Knob Sea Star. Now this guy is absolutely beautiful. Price point's a little bit high on this guy, but one thing that is very, very important to mention about this starfish is that it is not considered reef safe. They are considered easy to care for, have a peaceful temperament and a carnivore-based diet and can grow upwards of an inch. Now, as far as tank size, when it comes to starfish, it's not a huge deal. But the fact that it is not reef safe is in my opinion, is. These guys are known for eating soft corals, sponges, tube worms, clams, other starfish, other invertebrates. All that being said, a absolute beautiful starfish that is incredibly visually appealing, just not a great candidate for a reef tank. Coming in at number nine on our top 10 most stunning saltwater invertebrates is the electric blue hermit crab. Now, this guy packs a punch when it comes to the price tag. You're talking almost $12 per hermit crab. And I thought $5 for a scarlet was expensive. These guys are considered easy to care for, have a peaceful temperament, which is not something you typically see when it comes to hermit crabs, or at least from a classification standpoint. Have a omnivore-based diet, are considered reef safe, and can grow pretty large. It can grow upwards of 2 inches. Now even though that these guys are considered an omnivore, they do have a reputation for eating green hair algae. Not a lot of hermit crabs out there will do that. And the reason I suspect that to be true is because green hair algae probably doesn't taste very good. It doesn't look very good. I can't imagine it's very tasty. Coming in at number eight on our top 10 most stunning invertebrates is the electric flame scallop. Now these guys are absolutely gorgeous and I myself have not taken on the responsibility of trying to keep one of these guys yet, mostly due to the fact that they are considered expert only. But even so, they still have a peaceful temperament. The coloration on them is absolutely phenomenal. They are a filter feeder, which has a lot to do with the fact that they are expert only, but are considered reef safe. Now, as far as tank size, a lot of the times that isn't going to play a part when it comes to invertebrates. As long as it's an invertebrate that doesn't grow too big, scallops, incredibly slow growing, and you actually can put a number of them in a tank if you have the ability to give them what they need to not only grow but thrive. And in most cases, when you are dealing with a critter that has a expert level requirement, nine times out of 10, you're talking about the feeding habits of that critter. And that is definitely something that is at play with the electric flame scallop. Its feeding requirements are definitely top notch. And you're talking, you know, hand feeding phytoplankton and other organic foods to these guys so that they can grow and survive and be happy. Coming in at number seven on our top 10 most stunning invertebrates is the spiny sea cucumber. Now, again, another expert level critter that has a peaceful temperament and is a filter feeder. Again, kind of going on that theme that we've been seeing a couple times already in this video. The expert level is usually attached to its feeding requirements of said critter. They are considered reef safe, can grow upwards of five inches and require a minimum tank size of 30 gallons. One of the first invertebrates that we talked about on this list that actually have a minimum tank size requirement. Now, what makes this guy so interesting or puts it into the expert level category is the fact that it needs daily zooplankton feeding 
and also liquid invertebrate foods. So you don't necessarily have to have a bunch of live cultures kicking around. If you have some solid foods, maybe something from Reef Nutrition, that's going to do the trick for this guy and keep it happy and alive and well. Coming in at number six on our top 10 most stunning invertebrates is the red ball sponge. Another expert level. This one's a little bit different though. So as far as the expert level care level, it does have a peaceful temperament. It's not going to go out there and crush a bunch of other invertebrates. Kind of just sits there and does nothing. But it is a filter feeder and again has some interesting feeding requirements. Is considered reef safe. And as far as tank size, doesn't really matter. But as far as tank placement, you kind of have something that you need to make sure is at the middle or bottom of the reef tank. Water flow, lighting, moderate is going to help keep this guy happy. Now, as far as handling a sponge, and I've talked about this in other videos, it's very, very important to make sure that they are not exposed to air. So that kind of brings you into an interesting place as far as how do you add this guy to a reef tank? What it does require is coming from a source that you trust that you have water that this animal is shipped in that is actually going to enter into your reef tank or at the very least some type of quarantine setup that doesn't have any medications in it so you can observe it, make sure that it is good and then from there do a couple water changes and move it into your display tank. What I absolutely love about sponges is the fact that they actually remove silicates from the water column. So that's how they grow. Much like how red slime needs silicates to grow, sponges need it as well. And then in, in many cases will outcompete red slime for them silicates. Coming in at number five on the top 10 most stunning invertebrates is the blue velvet nudibranch. Now this guy, again, expert level but he has a secret little trick that makes him absolutely priceless. Is considered expert level care needed and is a peaceful of the temperaments. Has a carnivore based diet, is considered reef safe, can grow upwards of two, almost three inches and requires a minimum tank size of 10 gallons. Now, not only is this guy absolutely stunning, but his food requirement is also stunning. Now this guy needs himself some flatworms to eat. So if you are having a flatworm issue, get yourself a blue velvet nudibranch and he's going to go chewy chewy chomp onto flatworms, which is absolutely phenomenal. Now if you are having a problem with flatworms, check out the blue velvet nudibranch. The one thing I will stress is there is going to be a time where the flatworms start to dissipate in your reef tank and you need to have a plan for this guy when that time comes because it, it wouldn't be fair to put him in the reef tank and then just let him starve. Coming in at number four on our top 10 most stunning of the invertebrates is the red fire shrimp or blood shrimp or whatever what you may call him. This, in my opinion, is one of the most stunning of the shrimps out there. And if you have never had one, I strongly recommend that you check them out and pick one up for your reef tank because they are absolutely gorgeous. This guy is considered easy to care for. Isn't that great? Finally, an invertebrate on this list that's easy to care for. Has a peaceful temperament. The coloration is absolutely phenomenal. Has a carnivore-based diet. Is considered reef safe and can grow upwards of 2 inches. Coming in at number three on our top 10 most stunning of all the reef tank invertebrates out there, some of them not so reef tank safe, is the Brittle Sea Star. Now this one is of the fancy variety and is absolutely gorgeous. If you have never had a Brittle Starfish, they are incredibly interesting to watch and are very, very, very interesting. I don't know where that came from. I'm sorry, but I'm leaving it in. I love it. All right, so these guys are considered moderate care level, are semi-aggressive, and have a omnivore-based diet. They're a very opportunistic critter, which they're going to chewy chomp on whatever they can get their hands on. They are considered reef safe, and in my opinion, one of the best starfish 
for a reef tank, and that has a lot to do with how nimble they are and how easily they move through a reef tank. They're not going to be a starfish that's knocking stuff over. Uh, they're very gentle in the way in which that they move throughout the tank. Even with being gentle, that doesn't mean small because these guys can grow upwards of 10 inches. Check out the Brittle Star if you're looking to add something with a lot of character to your reef tank. Coming in at number two on our top 10 of the most interesting and invertebrate type critters is the red scarlet hermit crab. This is hands down one of my most favorite and absolutely one of the most stunning of the hermit crabs that are available to reef tank hobbyists. All that being said, they do pack a punch when it comes to the price tag, but not nearly as much as the electric blue that we talked about a little bit earlier in this list. Now, I, I have shared many times my story of picking some of these guys up, getting them home, acclimating them, and putting them in the same tank as an emerald crab, and that emerald crab made very, very short uh, work of those scarlet hermit crabs, which was devastating. Uh, so as far as care level in these guys, they are considered easy to care for, have a peaceful temperament, and are considered reef safe. They're very opportunistic with their diet, going to eat just about anything they can get their hands on and grow upwards of an inch and a half. Now, as far as compatibility, I would not put these guys in a very large tank. One, because they're so expensive. Two, because they're very docile when it comes to other hermit crabs or even other crabs or other invertebrates in the tank. So I'm going to put them in a smaller tank that is species specific to the red scarlet hermit crab. Absolute stunner. Check them out. And coming in at the number one spot on our top 10 most stunning invertebrates is the Maxima Clam. Now, as far as care goes for these guys, it is very important to make sure that they have what they need to be able to survive. Now, when you are placing them into the tank, it is important to make sure that you burp them because if they have air trapped inside them, they're not going to be able to get that out and it could potentially kill them. Now, anytime that you have the ability to buy aquaculture, I strongly recommend that you do that because it's going to have a better chance at survival in your reef tank. And a great way to be able to identify an aquacultured clam as opposed to a wild caught is in most cases, your wild caught is going to be much bigger and your aquaculture is going to be a lot smaller because there are laws about exporting small clams. So make sure you buy yourself some aquaculture clams. Uh, the next thing that you want to make sure you, that you do is before you add a clam to your tank, you want to drip acclimate them much like you would any invertebrate, but you don't need to take like the three hour rule. Uh, usually 45 minutes is going to do it, but you do want to inspect them prior to adding them to your reef tank. Uh, sometimes you want to give them a little bit of brush with maybe a uh, toothbrush that is dedicated to your tank and inspect them to make sure that there's no pests present. They do often carry pests, even the aquacultured kind can as well. So pyramid snails are a real thing, and it doesn't take a whole lot to get them off a clam. And if you do get a clam that has pyramid snails, it's not a huge thing. You just need to take it out every so often and make sure that you're getting those buggers off. Uh, but outside of that, check out a clam. If you don't have one in your reef tank, if you got strong lights and you got a little bit of nitrates, it's going to do just fine in your tank. Absolute beautiful addition to any reef tank, the Maxima Clam. All right, folks, so now it is time to announce the winner of the Lifeguard Aquatics Turbo Reactor Giveaway. So without further ado, let's hit the drum roll. Palm Chow Chewy, you are the winner of the Turbo Reactor. Congratulations, man. Reach out to me so I can get that out to you. And thanks for everybody else who played along in last month's giveaway. Don't forget, you got this month's giveaway. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell. Leave a comment. Hit the like button. And you'll be in the running for this month's giveaway here on the Mad Hatter Reef channel. All right, guys. That's going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I will see you next week right here with a brand new video.